Good morning. So we prepare our hearts for worship. I'll turn it over to Alan as he leads us in on this morning's prelude. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this beautiful uh, frost-covered morning. First time I've had to scrape the windshield this morning, so uh, fall slash winter is coming, uh, but it's beautiful. I love uh, this crisp autumn weather. I hope you do too. Uh, Grateful to have you with us today on this uh, beautiful day that the Lord has made. Thank you for joining us today. If you're here in the sanctuary or if you're watching from home or uh, perhaps on an adventure up north to a cabin or wherever you are, uh, we are here at Faith Lutheran in Forest Lake, Minnesota, and we thank uh, the Bucks, for Mary and Tony Buck, for sponsoring our broadcast in memory of Howard Sargent. Uh, So thank, uh, thank you very much to the two of you. Uh, a couple of announcements uh, this week as we're just kind of pointing towards different things. Uh, one thing that I do want to celebrate, congratulations to Hugh Drinkwitz. He received his Eagle Scout yesterday, yesterday so congratulations to Hugh. I had, the, uh, I, I had the honor of being able to write a recommendation. It was really fun to just be able to, to lift up a lot of the stuff that he has done and how uh, he's really a true servant. And so congratulations to Hugh. Uh, the next thing I want to point you to is um, I'm holding a bag of candy. And no, this isn't for me to snack on uh, during worship. You'll notice the bag's not... Yeah, I know. Sorry, Deacon Nina. We, this isn't for you and me. Uh, this is a reminder for you that in a couple of weeks, we actually have Trunk or Treat. And so uh, this week week's MEA, the following Wednesday, we're having trunk or treat, and we'll be outside. Kids are going to have trunks. Uh, The confirmation groups will have a trunk. If uh, you or somebody you know has had a trunk in the past and wants to be able to provide a trunk this year, you're certainly welcome to do so, but I ask you to please uh, reach out to Kathy Nelson if you know uh, her information is either on the website or in the weekly emails. Kathy would love to know if you're planning to show up, and then she'll give you some details on what to do, how to have your trunk, all that good stuff. But I'm holding the bag of candy because we need a lot of candy. Last year, we did the drive through trunk or treat, which was really awesome. This year, we're expecting that a lot of kids and a lot of families are going to show up because this is uh, going to be a really beautiful, hopefully exciting time to be able to, to get together and have some trunk or treat time. We need candy so we don't run out. So this is a reminder to you, if you want to bring in candy, uh, if you go to door number one, there's a big bin of candy. Uh, trust me, I'm not snacking on it all week. It's, it's there. It's, we're keeping it for the kids. So please remember to do some of that. We'd love to have some candy. Uh, next thing that I want to point you to, however, is, is one of these things. Uh, if you've ever used a QR code, this is really actually pretty important. Uh, we have something fun planned for November, but we need We need about 100 people to take a survey. And so all you got to do is open up your phone. And if you've never done this before, you just line it up. And then your your phone will see that it's going to try to take you to a link. You can bust out your phone right now. I'm serious. Like, do it. Okay? I feel like Justin Grimm. Um, Take the survey. It's five easy questions. Like, it's meant to take you, like, 10 to 15 seconds. Well, maybe 20. But just do it, and the more that we get, yeah, this is awesome. I, sh- I want to take a picture of you guys taking pictures. This is great. 
All right, so everyone's taking pictures. Okay, so take that survey. Uh, you, actually, we're going to have a drawing. This is the one where we're having a drawing. The winner of the drawing gets a $50 gift card to Forest Lake Floral. So, uh, yeah, all you got to do is answer five easy questions. Uh, so, um, please do that. If you haven't done that, uh, you don't have your phone, or you, you um, maybe if you're watching from home and, you ha and you're watching on your phone and you can't do the survey, uh, just, you'll, you'll find it in the weekly email. Okay. All right, Sunday school is, we don't have Sunday school next week because it's M, uh, MEA break. Just wanted that to be on your radar uh, for families. Uh, you're welcome to, to come to worship, have your kids sit up at the uh, tables here, whatnot. But just wanted to give that uh, to you as an update. Also, confirmation, we don't have confirmation this Wednesday for MEA. All right, so the last announcement that I do want to point you to is uh, an event coming up next Sunday. And so two of our groups, Cherish All Children and Aspire, uh, have kind of collaborated on this event. And we have a message from the two chairs of those committees who want to invite you to this. Hi, I'm Deborah Peterson, and I I'm with Cherish All Children here at Faith Lutheran. Cherish All Children is a part of the Lutheran Synod Social Services and we are based around education for sex abuse and trafficking. My name is Kay Drinkwitz, and I'm part of a new committee here at Faith Lutheran Church called ASPIRE. ASPIRE stands for Advocating, Serving, and Promoting Inclusion and Racial Equality. Our two faith teams have come together to sponsor a play um, by Chain Reaction Theater here at Faith Lutheran. And Chain Reaction Theater does plays um, based on social justice issues. The play that we'll be showcasing this month at Faith Lutheran Church is called White Privilege. And what we should talk about is first what white privilege is not. So white privilege is not about blame. It's not about shame. It doesn't mean that as a white person that me or my ancestors before me didn't work very hard for everything we have or should be a proud, shouldn't be proud of our accomplishments. What white privilege means is that we need to be understanding and acknowledge that the experiences of non-white people, people um, of color, do differ from us as far as um, access, access to opportunities and resources and wealth. Um, as well as treatment. So we hope that you will all join us on Sunday, October 24th at Faith Lutheran at 3 p.m. for this play, White Privilege, so that we can all learn together and open our hearts. It's free to the public and it's about two hours long and we hope to see you there. One correction, it is not free to the public. It, it, is, it is $20, and you can get those tickets ahead of time or at the door. Uh, okay, so thank you very much to Kay, uh, for Kay and Deborah for all your work on getting that. Uh, before we have the kids up, let's do this. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And I invite you to share that peace with those around you as you're moving around. We'll also invite the kids to start coming forward, all right? All right, everyone else can have a seat while we get the kids moving on forward. Hey, how's everybody doing? Very good. Uh, today, we're going to be talking in worship a little bit about the word service and to serve. When I, when I say to serve, what, what does that mean? What, what does it mean to serve? It means you're getting food. Exactly. Yes. Yes, that is a great answer. What are some other things that you might think of when you think of the word serve? Yeah. Helping people and doing, and doing a survey. Yeah, that's actually one thing we can do to help serve too. You got so many good answers today. What other things come to mind when you think about serving? Anything you do to serve? At, yeah. Being helpful. You guys are awesome. Great answers. And being nice? Wow. I have, I, I've, I've, I've got a question. When you serve, 
are you, what, are you, what are you giving? You're giving kind of your time. You're giving, sometimes you're giving things. Maybe you're giving your toys, exactly. Have you ever had to go through your room and think about the toys that you're going to give to help somebody else? Yeah, we just did that in our house too because we're changing seasons right now. Yeah. Yeah, so sometimes when I think about serving... Well, here, I'm going to give you an example of, of maybe one way that service looks. Can I squeeze through here? All right. So I think about service as sometimes it's, it's taking something that we have. So what's inside of here? Yeah, can you put your finger in there? Now, you, there is truly water in there, correct? Yeah, it's all wet. Yeah, it is. I know. There is really water in here, okay? So sometimes... Maybe we're given our time, maybe we're given our toys, maybe we're given uh, just different things. And, and we take the thing that we have and we give it to someone else, right? It looks kind of like this. I've given all of my toys away to help out friends. What happened to all the water? It's gone. Any water left in there? No. Completely empty, completely dry. How am I going to get more water? I got to go to the sink? Oh, well, what are some things that you do to maybe refill your bucket? Well, go to the water fountain. But let's think about how about if you have done something to like serve. Maybe you've helped someone else and you've like maybe you spent the whole day cleaning your room or you spent the whole day like raking leaves out in the yard or you spent the whole afternoon like doing a lot of work for your mom or dad. You shared your toys the whole day, and you were exhausted, weren't you? You were just so tired. What are things that you do to maybe refill your bucket to, like, make you get a little bit feeling better? Yeah? How about, how about taking, what are some things that you do that, that make you feel better? Yeah. Huh? Huh? Read. Oh, that's a great example. So reading and just taking a little bit of time. Um, actually, why don't you guys help me? Can you grab one of those cups up there? All right. We're going to call this um, taking. Wow, look at that. You got. Can you pour that water back into this bucket? So right now, whew, we're really tired. We're going to refill our bucket by taking a little time to go read. Thank you very much. Great example. Any other ideas? Yeah. Painting. Well, there's a great idea. Do you want to go grab one of those cups up there too? Sharing. Oh my gosh, that would that would fill your bucket too. Do you want to grab another cup? You want to get one of the cups? All right, that one's already empty, so I'll take the, uh, the empty one. Yeah, all of these things help refill up our buckets. Maybe taking a nap or maybe eating a healthy snack. These are all great examples of refilling your bucket. We got one more up there. Do you want to grab that one? Do you want to grab that one? Oh, you definitely wanted to get one. Here's the last one. You got it? All right, come on over. Let's refill that bucket. Look at all those good, healthy things that you guys did. So now that you've done all of this, you've got your bucket back full again, and you can continue to serve. How cool is that? That's kind of how God works in our lives. One of the things that we can do to help refill our buckets is to pray. I, we'll pour more. We'll pour more. Yeah, definitely. We've now refilled. We can pour some more back in. Look at that. It's back and it's full again. And we still have a little bit left in our bucket. One thing that we can do to keep that bucket full is to pray. Can you guys fold your hands and repeat after me? Thank you, Jesus. For filling our buckets so we can share what we have and our time and our love with others. Amen. You guys had so much good advice today. One of the things that may be a special treat to refill buckets is uh, something in Kathy's hands right now. <gasps> Whoa, I think a bunch of the adults are like, I want to go to Sunday school. Let's all follow Kathy, and you guys might get a little treat to fill your buckets once you get to Sunday school today. All right, thank you guys very much. And I'm going to turn it back over to Linda.
So we invite you to stand as you are able to sing in our opening song, Immortal Invisible. And we just heard a wonderful rendition of it for our prelude today. <laughs> gather in worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Christ Jesus, God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all of your sins. Amen. We pray together. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples on earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. At this time, we have our prayer lab minute for today. There's a powerful healing story in Mark chapter 2. A paralyzed man is brought in by four friends. These folks believe that Jesus can heal their friend, but the crowd is so large and so thick that they cannot get to Jesus. They end up letting down the mat and bringing the man into the house through the roof. Jesus heals this man because of the incredible faith of his friends. This is a wonderful example of how we can carry one another in prayer. Is there a person in your life who is suffering, in need of Jesus's healing touch, or who just needs a friend with faith? Invite three others to join you in metaphorically carrying this mat. You will be joined in intercessory prayer for this person by others who are willing to unite on the journey. Your communal prayers can be a stand of support and solidarity for your loved one. And the fellowship of prayer may encourage you to continue in faith, in prayer, and in hope for the one whose struggles lay heavy on your heart. May your prayer for others be persistent with a team of dedicated prayers helping to carry the mat. Thank you so much, Deacon Nina. One of the joys of special music is to be able to invite different faces into music ministry. And today, I have the pleasure of welcoming my daughter, Kelsey Burke, playing oboe, collaborating with Alan on a piece called Amoroso. <laughs>
Jesus, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by the bruises we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have all turned away from him, and the Lord has laid on him the inequities of all of us. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like the lamb is led to the slaughter, and like the sheep that before its shears is silent, so that did not open his mouth. By the perseverance of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. The word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able. Gospel reading from the 10th chapter of Mark. James and John, the son of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do us a favor we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in the glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink from the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptized that I baptize with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you that I drink you will drink. With the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom have been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called to them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers, lord it over them. With the great ones, they are tyrants over them, but it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And for whoever wishes to be First among must be slave of all. For the Son of the Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Please join with us in singing our hymn of the day, Guide Me Ever, Great Redeemer. be seated. 
Grace and peace to you, my friends in faith. On Friday morning, more like Thursday overnight in the middle of the night, I got up in the middle of the night to drive to Moorhead. And if you've ever made that trek, you know it takes a long time. Uh, I had my first leaders meeting at 7 a.m. that morning for a drill. And thanks to some coffee, thanks to a lot of coffee, I was uh, thinking through on that drive about what my first word would be for the day. As I spoke to the troops as they were standing there, what word would I share with them as they were preparing for the weekend ahead as well? I'd been warned ahead of time, as this would be my first, first word, to be brief. So on that long drive along I-94, my mind kept coming back to this gospel for the week. What word in today's reading really jumped out as being something that would would really stick with this message for the day. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. And there it was, to serve. I thought about why everyone was there for the weekend. Because in one way or another, truly our mission within the National Guard is to serve. And so I spoke to them at that opening formation, and I asked everyone to think about how collaborative, uh, collaboratively we would, do, we would be serving, how each of their duties was dependent on the teamwork of someone else to be able to accomplish their goals for the weekend. Together, we aren't there to be served, but to serve. As Jesus is sharing this message with his disciples, that he's not there to be served, but to serve, I think about how that teaching would have come across to the disciples. They didn't quite understand what he's talking about. And Jesus is trying to tell them this because of some of the false assumptions that they'd made, especially James and John, who are looking for the glory, who are looking for that ability to be on his right and his left and to be in that position of power next to Jesus, what they think Jesus is there for. Standing next to Jesus is actually about giving up our power. New Testament scholar Don Jewell has this to say. He said, Jesus' first comments about discipleship suggest that followers, we must be prepared to take up our crosses and follow, even all the way to death. That doesn't seem to be the issue here, however. You see, the question isn't willingness to die, but it's it's rather the willingness to lead without flaunting authority. The whole passage has to do with status and leadership, Hardly of interest or concern to a community of desperate, persecuted believers. Think about that. In fact, such comments would be of interest to a community that has tasted power and likes it. A community that is already experiencing the pressures of institutionalization. I think about what that means for us. Because it would be easy for me to just stand up here on my soapbox today and tell us all we have to do is give up our power And everyone would say, sign me up. We can maybe collectively pat ourselves on the back and say, yeah, that sounds great, Pastor John. We're we're in. Uh, But but I got to go watch the football game. I got to go do something. Like, our, our attention span is short. But I think about, really, this is the time to use our power. This is our time to share our influence. This is our time to give of what we have. And so I think about what's stirring up in the Holy Spirit in this church right now. I think about what one of the confirmation groups discovered on Wednesday night when they realized what giving up their power could look like. Remember what I shared with you last week? I talked a little bit about some of those those buckets. Where do, we, where do we want to spend some of our time and energy? And remember, I asked the confirmation group that same question, right? This is what those buckets all look like. So let's zoom in a little bit. There, boom, refugees was number one. 21% of the confirmation students, uh, out of all of their buckets, this was the fullest bucket. And we remember how we were pouring all the water in. This is the thing that they wanted to serve the most. That was their first choice. And I thought it was interesting So I followed up with one of the groups on Wednesday night. I I asked them a little bit about why they chose refugees. So uh, here is Daniel Deemer's group. This is his group of boys. I I went to their classroom and I asked them a few questions. Uh, We talked for a few minutes and and they briefly explained what, what they anticipated or envisioned what the refugee experience might be like. We didn't get super deep into the conversation. They they really hadn't had a time to process it a lot. Uh, So I left 
Uh, but then Daniel followed up with me afterwards, and he said that some of the insights that they came up with after he shifted their focus were fascinating. Because he asked them to switch their idea of being served and then to serve. So here's how he started it. He said, I started by asking them what we could do to provide to refugees who are coming here to America and got some pretty uninspired answers. Campers, food, money. And I'm like, well, okay. And he said, not to say that these aren't inspirational, but in many ways those are more transactional. And so some of the ideas from the boys as he was trying to shift that idea, was to get them out of thinking about living in their own comforts and to put themselves in the shoes of someone who's a refugee. So Daniel threw off those Nikes and put his group into some flip-flops that were held together with duct tape. And he created a scenario for him. So here's what Daniel did. He said, all right, boys, imagine, if you will, the Canadians have invaded Look at how scary they are. What if the only country that was safe for you to go to after those darn Canadians came across the border was Afghanistan? What would you want when you got there? How would you want to be treated? Ah, suddenly the boys had to start thinking about the things that would be important to them to be in a completely different place where they didn't speak the language, where they didn't understand the culture, they didn't understand the customs. And so here's some of the things that they said. Translators, or someone to teach me the language. What else did they want? Someone to help them find the foods that they like or to be able to create the foods that they like. Someone to help show me around the town, like finding grocery stores, the library, parks, schools, etc. Someone to play with me. Finding somewhere to live. Maybe having a community garden where they could grow the produce that they're used to. Maybe it was a community with people like me so that I don't feel lonely, so other other Minnesotans who had been displaced all having to kind of gather in a similar community so that there's some shared uh, culture and shared customs. And finally, someone to invite me to their house and be a friend. As this list continued to grow, Daniel said, jackpot. <laughs> I think oftentimes without knowing the opportunities that are in front of us, what Daniel's group was able to articulate is exactly what Faith Lutheran could do for refugees who have been displaced from Afghanistan and who are coming to Minnesota. And if we partner with Lutheran Social Service of Minnesota, these opportunities are exactly on this list. We can walk alongside a refugee family. That could include a, ref uh, a refugee family from Afghanistan, potentially one that has served alongside our own military personnel to be able to adapt and to feel safe in our country. And so to do all of these things, we can actually do that for a family that's been displaced. And there's a program that LSS has that's called the Circle of Welcome. So this is Kate Doohan, and she joined us on our uh, council meeting this past Tuesday as we had some questions about, well, what exactly could this look like if we wanted to be a Circle of Welcome congregation? So to be a Circle of Welcome congregation... Essentially, we would make a six-month commitment, and there'd be some partnership. For example, we'd have people greeting folks at an airport. We'd have a refugee family that we'd walk alongside to be able to provide that relationship, to provide some of that help. Now, this combines two different things. It combines our volunteers, but it also has a financial commitment. But here's the thing. The financial piece isn't anything that we have to worry about. We have some gifts. We have some dedicated funds that can already help support at least this first family if we were going to go forward with this. If faith wants to welcome more families, perhaps that could be reflected in our budget for 2022. But the volunteer piece is the big thing and the thing that I want to stir up in your hearts today and to think through this a little bit. You see, they're looking for teams of five to ten people. And you'd get trained by Lutheran social, uh, Lutheran social Service. And a lot of the tasks that used to be done by churches are now done by social workers. 
So what they really need is very similar to the list of what Daniel's group brainstormed. The needs are really along the lines of being able to be in partnership and in relationship. So in order to do this, we, we need volunteers to identify an interest. We need you to think, wow, is that something I could do? And notice that it's a bigger team. It's five to ten people. So no one's going to be expected to carry the entire load by themselves. In fact, as I've talked about this, multiple confirmation groups have already jumped up and said, we, 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 we want to do this. So we know that not only is this going to be something where, uh, where you might be able to reach out and do this and be able to have an opportunity to meet someone from a different culture and to grow and learn from them, you might also get the opportunity to walk side by side with some of our younger members, some of our youngest generation to kind of get a sense of where their head's at, where's the, where's the spirit leading them. So what's next? I know that's what you're thinking. Well, how are we going to make this happen? Well, here's the next steps. This is what Kate showed us. She said, well, first of all, discern as a group. I mean, is this something you want to do? Pray on it. Like, seriously, let's, let's consider what this could look like. And then if we do, in fact, make a commitment, there's a few things that we're going to need to know to make sure that the commitment is something we can commit to. And that's seeing if we have a volunteer team. So if you want to be on that volunteer team, you, I've already told you to bust out your phone once today. So if this is something you want to, want to do, email at togetheratfaithfl.org, and I'll actually send you the 23 minutes of Kate's presentation during the council meeting, and you can watch it for yourself and be like, yeah, I'm in. Or you could be like, okay, great, that, I can pray for it. I can help uh, support this. I can do different things. I can maybe bring in items. There are so many ways that our congregation can walk forward with this. But if this being on this volunteer team sounds like something you want to do, email at together at faithfl.org. And like Casey Stanley said a couple of weeks ago, there's no, you aren't going to have to sign anything in blood. I'm not going to make you make any super huge commitments right on the spot. But if this is something where you want to learn a little bit more about it, take that first step. Send me that email. Now, some of these relationships are going to be, I mean, this could be life-changing, right? If we participate in this training, I think about some of the ways that that we are all going to be able to, to learn and grow from this. Now, the volunteers can learn and grow, but also as a congregation, as we're hearing those stories and we're learning about this, there's going to be opportunities for us as we are, are partnering with a family. I can't wait to see what this could look like for us because it's really exciting to think of how the Holy Spirit has been working through our congregation. You look at what th- the things that this church has done in the past, whether that was the Calls family or the Vang family from previous generations This church has walked with refugees before. It's part of our DNA. I can't wait to see if our history of welcoming the refugee is a tradition that will continue into the future. Remember what the word of the day was? It's to serve. We exist not to be served, but to serve. These families are coming. They're at Fort McCoy already. A lot of them are already there. But they're going to need our help. They're going to need to see some friendly faces of welcome. Some friendly faces who will serve them. And now I see all you got those masks over, but I can tell you're smiling underneath them right now. We got some pretty friendly faces in this church. Is it going to be your face? That those families will see? I hope so. Amen. Wow. When we think about giving, doesn't a circle of welcome just make that explode? Like, doesn't that just inspire you to think about all of the ways that we can walk alongside our neighbors? I thank you for all of the things that you are already doing, and I'm pushing. These next couple weeks, we're going to be pushing. Like, what are we going to do? How are we going to give up more of that power? And you remember that when we give up that power, it's kind of like pouring out that water that I showed with the kids. It doesn't mean that that bucket's empty and it's never going to get full again. We keep refilling that. We keep giving that away. That's truly our stewardship at work. Thank you. Love our choir and our musicians and just how inspirational they are. And here they are with our offertory response today.
Let us pray. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Holy God of compassion, we come before you in prayer for the church, for the world, and for all of those in need. God who comes to serve. We pray for all of those who leave their homes by force or due to fear, violence, famine, or war. Equip your church to welcome with open arms these dear ones who have endured so much. Lead us by your spirit as we discern becoming a circle of welcome congregation. May we seek to serve you Oh God. And we lift up the partners in ministry who do this kind of work every day for Lutheran Social Services of Minnesota and Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services. Lord, in your mercy. Peaceful Spirit, we pray for all those people and places in need of your peace and presence. For the people of Haiti and for the recently kidnapped missionaries there. For violence in Beirut, Israel, Palestine, Bangladesh, Norway, Britain, and Afghanistan. For all those places that are torn apart by war and famine, especially for Yemen and Ethiopia. By your power, O oh God, turn our weapons into plowshares and bring peace where it seems beyond possibility. Lord, in your mercy. God of relationship, thank you for the power and transformation of being in relationship with you and with others. Strengthen our friendships, partnerships, and family relationships as places of your love and grace. Equip us to work alongside others to share your relentless love and undeserved mercy out in the world. We lift up especially the St. Paul Area Synod and our companions in Tanzania, Guatemala, and Kumamoto, Japan. Lord, in your mercy. Healing love. We pray for all of those in need of healing of body, mind, and spirit. We lift up the many among us who battle addiction, mental health, and physical health concerns. Today we remember Chuck Tolefsrud, Jean Anderson, Charlene Jennings, Steve Wells, Donald Agerer, Ellen Erickson, Merle Jacobson, Derek Hanel, Therese Enquist, Maya Morissette, Sam Matson, Britta Dumke, and Dylan Marshall. We lift up healthcare workers weary from the seemingly never ending line of ill and suffering individuals. And we remember those we name silently in our hearts or out loud before you now. Lord, in your mercy. God who hears us, we pray all of these things and those that are held in the quiet of our hearts, trusting in your abundant mercy and care. In the power of your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is right to give our thanks and praise. And so it was that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. And together we join in the words as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We will have our communion after the closing hymn for those of you who are in the building. And if you are at home or wherever you are and you've assembled your communion, you're welcome to help yourselves right now. The body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood which we've just received strengthen and keep us in God's grace. I invite you to raise your hand, look around the room. I don't see a red dot, so I, I just am assuming somebody out there, maybe it's they, they get to look at the screen, but here we, oh, hi, hi, everybody. Let's do this. You guys are all going to get to do it today. Awesome. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. And may the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. What a blessing it is for us to serve. What a blessing it is to be sent forth to serve. Uh, couldn't have picked a more perfect closing hymn to inspire us today, Linda. Well, and let it inspire our hearts and our voices to join together in singing. excited because the ones who are serving us our coffee and treats are the first ones in line to be able to receive this gift and then as we go out we will all be able to participate in that gift as well. Uh, I am so excited for what the Spirit is up to here. So let's go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'll have you guys come forward and then follow the direction of the usher. Uh, you can have a seat if you're in the back because it might be a few minutes but we'll uh, have uh, this side come forward, receive the bread here, the wine here, and then there's a basket over there, and there's a basket over there. If you get that, and then you can head either that way or head out that way. Mm -hmm. 